Well, we're nearing the end of a long, intensive, and fantastic day. Um, and out of a kind of humanitarian sentiment, I thought I would actually keep this kind of short. And uh, so I'm going to give you a, uh, a short and suggestive version rather than the, uh, the detailed and thorough. That may raise more questions than it answers, but uh, uh, that's okay. That's one way of keeping the conversation going, right? So <clears throat> in thinking about civic culture, uh, I I've always kind of placed the, the civic agent in the center, the, uh, uh, the creature who does things, does, who's doing democracy. And uh, <clears throat> The more I began to think about it, uh, I began asking myself, well, who is this agent? Well, empirically, it's anybody and everybody. But if we want to begin to understand the agent, or in more conceptual terms, the subject, the civic subject, uh, on a deeper level, what does, what does it look, he, she, begin to look like? So in the... Uh, theoretical landscape of democracy, citizenship, and participation, uh, the concept of uh, the subject, of the civic agent, is often left implicit or modeled on some general notions that might not even fit well with the version of democracy that one has in mind. Now, there's an extensive uh, literature from a variety of intellectual traditions. Uh, and they diff that in different, different ways address identity, the self, the subject. Now, generally, when we're talking about democracy, we're thinking of collectivity, collective action. Uh, but yet, at some point, we have to deal with uh, the subject as uh, some kind of a, a, a unit of agency. In political theory, in liberal political theory, uh, we usually find a standard, rather uncomplicated kind of civic self. Um, as <clears throat> and the one that's mo mobilized is usually seem, assumed to be uh, the only viable one. There's little comparative reflection. And you know, we have this, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you read this kind of literature and you, and you begin to try to put together the, the traces uh, of who this subject is, you know, you get kind of a, I don't know, a, you sense, first of all, it's sort of a residual category, and as you piece it together, you get a su civic subject who's, I don't know, kind of a little flat-footed, um, kind of a cardboard cutout, or I don't know, maybe like an adult Boy Scout. Right? And notice the gendering. And <clears throat> yet there are, of course, other possibilities. And uh, so in this little short presentation, I, I want to... Uh, promote some reflection and discussion uh, on this. Uh, theorizing the subject, subject involves both a uh, normative uh, and an empir empirical historical dimension. Uh, how might the ideal subject look like for a particular version of democracy? Uh, and what modes of subjectivity prevail today in late modernity? Uh, an impact on democracy, and why do they prevail? So the conceptual perspective on the subject can hopefully help us to better, better grasp and understand the notion of civic agency. In the mid-70s, when I was a doctoral student, way back then and when, um, this was also the, the early years of the first big wave of uh, Birmingham Cultural Studies. And <clears throat> I recall being really grabbed by this uh, literature, uh, not least the ones that were wrestling with the notions of the subject. Uh, and they were building on uh, Lacan and Foucault and Derrida and Barthes, and there was this heady mix of French uh, theory uh, further uh, building and further extending psychoanalysis, structuralism, post-structuralism, uh, language, semiotics, 
uh, and soon thereafter uh, feminism in attempts to come to grips with the subject. And there was this general sense of a decentering of the unified subject. This is perhaps the perspective that kind of became crystallized out from much of this kind of literature. So the subject was alternatively composite, uh, repressed, multi-dimensional, multi constructed in discourse, ever self-divided, gendered, and so on. And there were other inputs also, not just from France. Uh, there was late Wittgensteinian notions based on language games, uh, symbolic action is interactionism from the American uh, traditions and so on. And we seem to have <clears throat> put this kind of uh, turbulence aside as if, it's, uh, as if it were resolved. And I want to reactivate these concerns and uh, not in the hopes of resolving anything, absolutely not, uh, but rather in reminding ourselves of the rather large range of possibilities, analytic possibilities we have available for grappling with uh, uh, the notion of the subject in relation to political participation and the dynamics of uh, democracy. So there's no final view, there's no one right version of the subject, uh, no one size fits all. Uh, it's more of a prismatic approach that as we turn the prism, different things come into view that can be useful about the subject. <clears throat> so, uh, since there's no true picture, uh, we in a sense, I think, can take the freedom, because if we leave the, um, the, the mental mode of orthodoxy behind, at least for the moment, and just begin to see what's available, um, considering our theoretical options uh, in, the in the light of various concrete uh, contexts of democracy, uh, we see that there's a, there's a range of uh, choices here. Now, luckily, I think the human subject has proven to be a rather slippery character and has resisted neat definitions, compartmentalizations, and so on. And I think it's helpful to keep this modesty uh, in, in mind. A, uh, uh, we're trying to sketch, not rigidly defined, but I think the sketches can serve as uh, guideposts. So <clears throat> let me begin with the good deliberating subject, uh, the one who largely populates the Habermasian literature and, uh, and the subject is uh, <clears throat> good because the subject deliberates. He, she listens, speaks in turn, is rational, logical, and so forth. And it's a um, nice normative model uh, which functions well in the context of communicative rationality. And, uh, <clears throat> but as soon as we get out to the real world and we go online or you argue with your neighbor uh, <clears throat> or as I sometimes say, you know, recalling when the, our kids were teenagers that Habermas completely uh, ignored the dimension of uh, adolescent hormones. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, we begin to see the, the, the limits of this kind of a model. And, uh, but it does have something to offer that, that, that is good that we want to, might want to take into account. There's also the, uh, a classic liberal self who pursues his or her own, her own interests, uh, which is sometimes seen in this uh, literature, the political theory literature, as a drive shaft of democracy. And this can also be seen as a good thing. Um, but then in the, last, in the last decade or so, there's been a lot of literature criticizing li liberal theory. Um, and sometimes this pursuing one's own interest becomes bad because it's selfish. And this liberal subject, the question sometimes asked, well, where is his or her civic sense? It's kind of an ego trip. And uh, the criticism then is that uh, there's a, a lack of community, a lack of civic solidarity. 
and so forth. But perhaps there's something, there's a component here that is ultimately useful. Now, uh, if we go back to the Habermasian model uh, or this, that subject, one of the key attributes is that this subject is really looking to get into subjective. Uh, I want to understand you, I want you to understand me. You know, so we can really get communicatively tight. And <clears throat> um, that's nice, but um, what if <clears throat> the I, the subject, I'm not so interested in intersubjectivity and authenticity and that kind of stuff, but I want to just kind of get my way with you. Um, well, we can bring in Irving Goffman. <laughs> and there, I think some democratic theorists would, said, would say, here's a bad model of the subject. Manipulative, instrumental, uh, not interested into subjectivity, but much more in image management. And uh, the, Goff the Goffman subject uh, is a, a kind of hustler who would probably be deemed civically undesirable in, in Habermasian terms. Um, but the manipulative image management, is that so far from democratic communication today? No. Uh, I think we have um, <clears throat> certainly you know, immediate level, but even say in everyday speech, a, uh, this is a kind of, uh, we can begin to connect with a rhetorical dimension and so forth. But so the Goffman, bad, but maybe useful. Uh, another thing about the Goffman perspective is that it accentuates the notion of performance. And this might, again, collide with our notions of authentic, but then hey, we can go back to the ancient Greeks and Hannah Arendt has been mentioned and Chantal Mouffe. Well, politics perhaps is performative. Who cares what the subject really thinks or feels? It's what he or she says and does that counts. So well, let's, keep, let's keep Goffman around for a while at least. Uh, if we jump to the late modern subject of, for example, Anthony Giddens, he or she is self-reflexive, right? She, she, he or she is doing their life course through the, uh, navigating through the, uh, the currents of late modernity, <clears throat> learning from experiences, uh, it's kind of like a monitoring self, uh, monitoring the environment, uh, learning from it, adapting, and so forth. And <clears throat> somewhat individualistic, but okay, uh, probably rather liberal and polite. Yeah. And <clears throat> I mean, this idea of self-reflexivity, self -ref that's a tough one, is good, but uh, wait, what if being self-reflexive requires a certain element of self-transparency? -trans what if we aren't completely self-transparent? Well, <clears throat> isn't that what Freud said? Um, the citizen is perhaps um, blocked, repressed. Um, perhaps the subject has an unconscious. Uh-oh, what do we do with that? With the unconscious, um, this would mean that people's actions are not necessarily steered by rational analysis, but can have all sorts of drives, such as, as mentioned earlier today, uh, fear, uh, guilt, desire, not just sexual, but you know, say desire for power. Have we, you know. uh, <clears throat> and they would not necessarily respond to rational argument, but might be moved by symbols, uh,